Alrighty, so three videos today. Wasn't expecting to do it. I thought, you know, starting off with Garrett Cole in the morning, then we had the rebuild. But now at the end of the day, we're starting to get a little bit of news, some rumors, some confirmed deals. So I figured, you know what? Let's keep the grind going. Let's get these videos out for you guys. And if you're still enjoying them, make sure you hit the like button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoy the content. And as always in the comment section, let me know your opinion on some of these rumors or deals that we talk about in today's video. If you missed the most recent video on the channel, it's going to be up here in this corner. It's my left, but it's your right. That's why I always say left corner when I really mean it's your right corner. So go and give it a watch if you missed out on it. And then if you missed out on any of the most recent videos, go to the channel, check them out. There might be something that you missed that you really want to see. So go back and watch it. So social links, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all that stuff down in the description below. And now let's 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 talk about it. There are a couple little rumors that I want to talk about possibly Arenado being traded. It doesn't seem likely, but I guess the Rockies are starting to listen to some some offers if possible. The issue with this is there's a no trade clause and also Arenado does have an opt out clause. So that does kind of make things kind of sketchy where teams are like, well, do we really want to trade for him if he's going to end up opting out in a couple seasons? So Arenado, top third baseman defensively and offensively in baseball would offer a lot to teams that are in need of a third baseman. You're talking about the Rangers, the Nationals, the Phillies, the Braves, the Angels. There's a lot of teams that need a third baseman. So if they have the pieces to get a Nolan Arenado and they can get him to stay for a long term, I don't see why not. Um, why not go for the trade? The Rockies are in a weird spot where they need to make some moves to get, become better or start a rebuild phase. So they either need to choose to win or rebuild and i think if they were to trade arenado it would signify a rebuild some other rumors that i did hear today eddie rosario is kind of being linked to the marlins they do kind of need a corner outfielder curtis granderson really isn't your solution for left field anymore i don't think he's even there anymore so if you could put eddie rosario somehow in left field i think that would help out a good lefty bat with some power Oof, that's just what they need another big rumor this one's kind of the big one and it's actually starting to gain some traction francisco lindor to the dodgers the dodgers are starting to make some moves it's seeming like they missed out on garrett cole and now they're looking to see if they could get francisco lindor i definitely think if this trade happens it's going to be massive you're talking maybe dustin may you're talking gavin lux involved top prospects maybe even some mlb ready players maybe even someone like a verdugo an outfielder that would help the indians so i'm thinking this is going to be a big trade if it happens and within the last couple hours there's been a lot of steam for this and it seems like it's starting to gain some traction and starting to become something that might actually happen pretty soon if it is to happen so lindor to the dodgers that's nutty like dodgers are doing everything they can to win a world series right now and you know we're even going to talk about one of the, the moves they made and actually let's just let's just get into that right now blake trinan to the dodgers one year 10 million and i think that's a pretty good signing for him let's talk about blake trinan's year last couple seasons and see how he was Alrighty, so before he was with oakland he obviously was with the nationals in 2017 and then got traded like at the midway point point. and with the nationals he was kind of a it was like a little bit of a yikes like whoa what's going on here he's not the best pitchers his era was pretty high his whip was high as well and then he went to oakland and it seemed like okay maybe he's starting to get you know things sorted out 2018 was a great year for him 0.78 era his whip sitting at 0.83 you're looking like you got a very solid you know reliever or closer but then you look at what happened in 2019 and it's like what happened well you know i know i know injuries played um some effect he wasn't healthy throughout the year maybe he came back too early from injuries tried to play through them obviously that's kind of an issue as well but you're looking at his stats he's close to a five at for an era his whips over 1.6 and that's that's a little bit of a yikes you know usually like the the, the average mark is 1.2 so you're looking at something you're like something's not right and injuries obviously are going to play a big issue to it but maybe it's just Maybe his time in Oakland's done, and obviously it clearly is. He's with the Dodgers now, and I think that's a great pickup for the Dodgers. You're looking at more of a, a pitcher-friendly park, a little bit more of a pitcher-friendly park, I would say. Um, and then you're looking at, you know, a, a strong team. You know, he, he doesn't have to come in in the ninth inning. He can be your seventh or eighth inning guy, take some of that weight off of Kenley Jansen. And I feel like this, for a one-year deal, $10 million, you know you're getting someone who, when healthy, is a pretty pretty solid reliever in Blake Trinan. And I feel like for the Dodgers who are trying to win now, why not go out and get that top reliever 
and take some of that pressure off Jansen. I think, I feel like this is a good move. It may seem like a little bit of like, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are we paying someone who had a really bad year? But I feel like, you know what? Maybe he has a bounce back year and this looks like to be a great, great deal for the Dodgers. And if things go well, they probably could sign him for another couple seasons. But I think for right now, one year deal, if it doesn't work out, he goes in for agency next year. Or maybe even they trade him to a team that's looking for a reliever, who knows? But for now, one year, 10 mil, it's not a terrible deal at all. So let's talk about another deal where a player from Korea for, like, was part of the Pirates. I think he was part of the Rangers as well. You're looking at Josh Lindblom. He's coming over from Korea. He signed a three-year, $9.1 million deal with the Brewers. Alrighty, so Linda Bloom is 32. I think he's heading into 33 once the season gets going for years old. He's been in Korea for the last three years, I believe. Was part of a diff bunch of different farm systems. He was, he's a bit of a journeyman at this point. But his last couple seasons in Korea has actually been really, really good. His whip has been sitting at one or below for the last three years, I think. And then um, I'm only going to show you two, but I'm pretty sure for the last three years it's been at one or below. And then you're looking at his ERA sitting at 2.88 for 2018 and 2.64 for 2019. He's been a starter sitting at 168 innings pitched and 194 innings pitched. So he's putting in the work. He's putting in the innings. He's been very consistent in Korea. The thing is, it's not the same level of, you know, players that you're going to get in Korea and the MLB. Obviously, the MLB is the best of the best. That's why it's Major League Baseball. So that's why it's the biggest league in the world. So yes, Korea does have its talent, but is he going to be able to take those stats, those those performances and bring them to the MLB? Is he going to be the same pitcher? I think, you know, three years, nine million for a player who's 32, maybe 33 by the time the season gets going. I'm not too sure about it. I know the Brewers are in need of pitching help. There's been a lot of a lot of interest in Lynn Bloom this year. So maybe this is a pickup that for what three million a year? It's not a terrible, not a terrible deal. But for me, I still have some questions about it. And I feel like the Brewers should definitely be targeting more high profile pitchers at this point because They've lost a lot of players in free agency this year. There's, I think they're still trying to compete, right? They're still trying to be contenders. Why not go out and get someone like a Tanner Roark, Dallas Keuchel, Madison Bumgarner, someone who is known, established, and can pitch well in the majors already, not someone who is now trying to come back and start to, like, you know, make his name in the majors at this point in his career. So, you know... Is it is it a terrible deal? I really don't know. He's really shown that he can pitch well in Korea. I'm just interested to see how that's going to translate now in the MLB. So for me, I'm just kind of I'm intrigued. I'm gonna you know kind of follow it, see how things go. But for now, I don't know. I really don't know. I think it's an interesting deal. The Brewers are looking for a pitcher. He's shown that he's he's putting in the innings. He can actually get you a lot of innings. So we'll see how it goes. I really don't know what to expect of it, but I'm interested for sure. So we got two more deals to talk about. The first one we're going to talk about is Tanner Roark to the Blue Jays, two years, 24 million. So the Blue Jays are definitely in need of some starting pitching, even relief pitching. That's kind of their weakness of their team right now. And Tanner Roark signing, that's a veteran to help with this young squad that they have. And I think it's a good move. Is Tanner Roark the best of the best? Definitely not. Like last couple seasons, you're looking at a 4.34 ERA and a 4.35 ERA. His whip is at about 1.3, 1.4. So is he the best? Is he the flashiest signing that you can get? No. But is he going to be a good veteran leader for a young pitching staff? Yes. Is he going to help out a pitching staff that definitely needs it? Yes. Is he going to give you innings? Yes. And that was another thing that the pitchers for or the, the starting rotation for the Blue Jays had. Only one pitcher hit the point of 150 innings, only one, and that was Trent Thornton. So Tanner Roark, the last two seasons, has had 180 and 165 innings. He's going to be a good veteran arm. He's going to get you those innings, and he may not be your best pitcher, but he's going to give you consistency throughout the season, and I think this is a good pickup. It's a good veteran to have in your rotation, and I think this was a good move for the Blue Jays. I still think they're at a point where they're still trying to get to that that fully like being a contender stage i still think they're like one or two years in a rebuild stage where they still have that one or two years left and then they can really be contenders they still have a young team that's still growing and developing tanner roark gives them that two years where they can really start to develop and being that veteran i think i think this was a good pickup is it 
Is it the best? No, but I think it was a good move for the Toronto Blue Jays. Simple, it's, it's a simple move. Is it a little bit of an overspend? Yes, but the Blue Jays are going to have to overspend to get those pitchers, to get those players, because again, they're still, they're still in a weird spot. They're not necessarily contenders, and if you want people to join you, you're gonna have to give them the money. So for the Blue Jays, I think this was a good move. It's a smart move, and we'll see how it plays out. So final one, and this one I think is the best of the bunch. I think this was some great business from the Mets. Michael Walker for one year, three million. I know there's some incentives that can make it up to 10 million, but for three million, you're getting Michael Walker. Tanner Roark just made 12 million a year. Michael Walker is about to get three million. This is some great business by the Mets. Let's look at some stats. So the last two seasons, you're looking at 2018. Michael Walker actually had a really good year. 3.20 ERA, 1.2 WHIP. About he pitched 84 innings. So obviously there may be some injuries. I can't really remember what happened in 2018. Maybe some injuries. Maybe he was more in the bullpen. And last year, he definitely had a down year. 4.76 ERA. You're looking at a whip at almost 1.6, which is pretty high. Um, 126 innings pitched. So he had a down year. You know, his career ERA is around the fours. So I know his whips around like 1.3, I believe, for career-wise. So Michael Walker, is he, again, one of the best signings you can go out and get? No, but for a fourth or fifth starter, they just lost Zach Wheeler. They're still trying to contend. I think this is a very low-risk signing, and I think this was great business for the Mets. One year, $3 million. Yeah, some incentives may bring it up to 10, but still, is he going to get that 10? I think he has to have like a perfect season to get that 10 million. This is a good bit of business from the Mets. He's going to be that fourth or fifth starter. Someone you just need to go out there, pitch those innings, and, you know, be out there every fifth day. This is good business, and it may not be the flashiest of signings. And you may think about, oh, man, this wasn't that great. But when you look at how Michael Walker finished the year, he finished on an absolute tear. Looks like some things were starting to click. Some things were starting to really get going. And I think Michael Walker's a good signing for the Mets. They just lost Zach Wheeler, like I've mentioned. And you get this fourth or fifth starter that definitely helps out your team you still have Syndergaard you still have Stroman you still have DeGrom that's a good one two three you know put Michael Walker in there he has a great year Ooh, your pitching rotation is looking solid so I think this was great business by the Mets I think it was a good signing and overall I think today had a lot of good business being done um you know trying into the Dodgers Walker to the Mets Tanner Roark to the Blue Jays I'm still intrigued by this Brewers thing looks like Lindor may be a Dodger there's a lot of stuff going on this offseason and I'm loving it. So if you guys are enjoying these videos, thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoyed the content. And as always in the comment section, let me know what you guys think about today's business that was done. As well as some of the rumors. What are you thinking about? If you're a Dodgers fan, are you excited about Lindor? If it does happen, obviously. If you're an Indians fan, what would you like in return? Obviously, don't go crazy and say the whole system, the whole farm system with the Dodgers. But what are some players you'd be interested in? So guys, that's about it. Again, there's going to be two videos on screen, my most recent video and also a video that YouTube recommends for you. Go and check out all my social media in the description and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.